What's going on YouTube? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Today I'm talking about a bunch of things I wish I knew before I started playing Raven Dawn. The most important thing that I wish I knew when I started playing Raven Dawn is the importance of weapon power. Weapon power is the most important secondary attribute you can have on your gear. When I first started, I bought tier 3 plate gear and I had impact and precision. Impact and precision are stats that I believed were going to make my archery class stronger. It's simply not the case. Precision, impact, haste, they will have their day. Right now, the most important stat is weapon power. If you do not have weapon power on every single piece of gear that you have as the secondary attribute, go to the marketplace right now and buy it. If you're a spell class, if you're a magic class, do spell power obviously don't don't do weapon power the great thing about raven dawn is that if you make a mistake on your gear you can easily infuse your old gear into your new gear i just put tier 3 plate gear into this brand new tier 3 leather gear and the infusion was free this isn't even gonna like double your attack power okay this is gonna make you feel five times stronger and this is vitally important especially for melee class and especially for my class which is is a shade striker which is archery warfare shadow because my healing my self-sustain is directly attached to the amount of damage i do so the more damage i do the more healing i do and i didn't learn this until level 58 Okay, legacy level 58. A friend told me, hey, let me look at your gear. Because I was really frustrated. I was, I felt really weak. I couldn't PvE. I was getting ruled in PvP. And he said, let me look at your gear. And he's like, oh, that's the problem. Um, and he's like, well, you're missing out on 16, you know, uh, 24, 32 weapon power. 31 weapon power, which is significant. So I did that. And now with food buffs and my armor, I can now hit hard cap pretty much. I can pretty much almost hit hard cap on my weapon power. And then I went out there, and the first PvP engagement I got into, I killed a level 75 at level 55. So I killed somebody 20 levels higher than me. It was pretty embarrassing for him. Made me, rejuvenated me into the game. I was having a really rough time, and then I was... I went from, you know, fighting for my life on every single mob to two, three shotting the mobs. It was remarkable. Shout out to Cole. I appreciate you, baby. Number two. So is, I'm going to reset my stats here, is you could click your stat redistribution one at a time, or you can hold shift and click, and it'll do 10 at a time. I apologize if you didn't know this ahead of time. It took me a while to realize this, and it was, uh, it was a lot of clicking. Also, I'll throw this in as well. You can hold shift over the top of your skills in your archetype window and it'll give you a little bit more information so here it says deal 393 weapon damage and then if you hold it it'll tell you that's a hundred percent weapon damage yep that's number two hold shift to redistribute your stats and hold shift to get more information on your skills <laughs> number three is going to be about earning silver um, as of right now, farming seems to be, if you're new to the game, farming seems the best way to run up your silver with your community lands. Um, and don't even bother running trade packs if you just started. I suggest the first time while you're out grinding, if you come across a mine, 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 mine. Mine until you reach iron ore and then mine further. As of right now, Mining is the most profitable profession to start. 300k plus an hour. 300k was actually very low. It was one of my worst hours. But the video's right here. 300k an hour at Mount Minos Mining. And that's for people between level 30 and level 40. But there's mines right away. You come across the mine almost instantly in this game. So stay at that mine for a very long time. As long as you possibly can. Run your mining up as much as you can. And then sell the materials or hold on to the materials and then I wouldn't even suggest running trade packs until you have until you can transport maybe three or four trade packs until you have like a medium wagon a tier three MOA with max strength and a small merchant ship and all of that is going to require like 1500 to 
or fifteen, yeah, fifteen hundred to three thousand iron ore. So when you first start, don't bother running any trade packs. Save up your trade certs and just do mining and farming. Trust me, and then sell the materials for farming or save them for trade packs, whatever you want to do. Oversupply. Oversupply. I have another video on oversupply. Uh, find the cheapest way to reach oversupply every single day, and this is going to progress you. Uh, this is going to progress your levels on legacy and effective levels as much as possible. What you can do is you can you can reroll to three smaller archetypes because if you notice your inactive archetypes not only give you skill points but they give you attribute points as well so you want these and there's certain breakpoints so right now my three main archetypes are level 55 and all my other ones are about level 36 or level 37 the next break breaking point that i'll get is level 40 where i'll get some stat points and i'll get some attribute points so if you want so whenever you're doing something you always want your main build to be higher than your low than your inactive archetypes, but you want to level your inactive archetypes. It's great to switch to your inactive archetypes while you're doing oversupply. It's basically a cap on the amount of XP you can earn from crafting. So let's just say I can earn 600,000 XP from crafting. As soon as I reach that 600,000 XP mark, my crafting is going to cost a lot more. So there's a silver tax on crafting. And then my first silver tax increase is going to be 10%. And then it goes up incrementally. And it just it gets exponentially more expensive from there. And it just, um, if you have the silver, I mean, go ahead. It gives It offers the same amount of XP, but it costs a ton more silver. So number four is oversupply. Number five, milk tea. This is the buff that Milk Tea gives you boosted experience remaining 337,000. 337, uh, milk Tea can be bought bartender right here uh, for 4,000 silver uh, pop. So here's the tooltip for it. Upon consuming, all experience gains are increased by 20% for the next 50,000 experience points. It's important to know how much XP you have for oversupply and then buy that much Milk Tea, but don't buy too much Milk Tea because it's actually pretty expensive especially when you're first starting out. Silver is really hard to come by, and it's going to be even harder to come by now in the current economy of this game. The maximum amount of over the XP you can get from oversupply is insane. It's quite a bit, and in order to reach that same amount of XP by grinding and creature hunting is going to, especially when you first start out, is going to take a few hours. So to reach crafting oversupply may only take 30 minutes. And that's hundreds of thousands of XP. But when you first start out and you're out gr uh, grinding mobs, getting hundreds of thousands of XP is going to take you quite a few hours. So you definitely want to prioritize reaching oversupply. You definitely want to prioritize your crafting XP every single day and then go out and grind. Okay, it's going to be expensive, but the amount of XP you can reach through crafting is going to take you a very long time to reach through creature grinding so make sure you get your oversupply done every single day super important <laughs> number six is going to be moa gear one thing i didn't i didn't focus on that much when i first started was my moa gear i didn't get moa gear till i think level 50. that's just because i was i was ignorant <laughs> so moa gear I went with the superior barding. I'll go to the marketplace here. But I went with the superior barding. Uh, this is the best MOA gear you can get right now um, that I could find. It increases your MOA speed by 20, which is great. Your MOA strength by 23. But the best part about this is it reduces the chance of being mounted by 25%. If you don't have MOA gear on and you're just trying to get cut through an area, these really low-level mobs are just going to dismount you the moment you hit the, the moment they hit you but if you have a moa if you have moa gear on it's going to significantly reduce the chances of you getting dismounted and you'll just be able to cut through that area this is great if you're running a single trade pack on a moa you know they'll have a reduced chance to dismount you or if you're just trying to cut through an area to get to a a dock or a quest. In order to make the barding, I bought a superior headgear. Be careful when you're buying them. Don't buy all eight. Reduce this number to one. Big tip there. <laughs> Be very careful when you're buying stuff. You have to buy the headgear and then you have to buy the matching saddle. These two together are about 240K. And then you go down to this guy. There's a Moa barding crafter in Southern Ravencrest. You actually have to take 
10 merchants thread to him as well, which are relatively cheap, 30K. Number six, get your MOA gear early. Seven is potions. When you first start out, potions are super expensive, um, but a lot of classes have built-in heals and you should rely on those instead of potions. Now, if you're following along with the video and you did number one, which was get weapon power on all your stats, or spell power on all your secondary attributes for your gear. Uh, this is gonna, this is actually gonna make your heals significantly better. So, um, on my archetypes here, so for warfare, I have Bloodseeker, which heals 15% of the damage dealt by basic attacks, and uh, and Bloodbath. Okay, and then I also have Feasting Strike, and I have a card on Feasting Strike called Polar Bear, and and it gives me 52% weapon leech for 10 seconds, which means all the damage I do in that amount of time uh, gives me heals as well. So I'll usually pair that, usually pair that combo with uh, with archery's quick fire, and it's a great way to catch a full heal. Um, and the more weapon power you have, the more damage you have, the more you're gonna heal. So believe it or not, Potions are quite expensive when you first start out, so make sure you identify your class's self-sustain and use it. If your class doesn't have a self-sustain, I highly encourage you to play a class that does. <laughs> Number eight is going to be questing. Um, although questing is a great source of infusions, I'll pull up my quest log here and let's look at just the quest I get for reaching level 60. Uh, I get 180 ghostly infusions, which you may think, which would sell for quite a bit of silver. Um, if I pull up the calculator here, uh, 180 times 1700, uh, 306K, I mean, that's not even that great. Plus, selling your infusions is a terrible, terrible idea. So by for reaching level 60, I only get 24,000 silver. That's really not a lot. That probably won't even cover my respawns for a day for PvP and PvE, PvE deaths. And we get a trade pack certificate, which I can get quite. A, I can squeeze a quite a bit of money out of if I run it on a war mode channel. Five hundred dollars essence is great, but it's only one. It's only one pack of cards. You know what I mean? So questing, although it's a great source of infusions. Infusions are super important. They offer terrible silver. Now I'm trying to get them to make silver rewards from questing 10 times the amount. Um, and even here, like 37,000 experience for a level 48 quest, 1.9K silver. This is pathetic. This is really, really low for a level 48 quest. Uh, I'm really trying to push for them to 10X these numbers. I don't think it'll negatively affect the game at all. After all, the the cost of entry for all the other ways to make money are pretty high right now. So um, I really think they could increase this for newer players. And quests do offer great, some quests offer great trinkets and great amulets, but that's about it. If Don't rely on quests for your silver or for your XP. The next best thing that quests offer is reputation. Okay, so do all your quests for your reputation, but that's it. What you actually want to do is while you're questing, you want to spend a lot more time in the grind spot that you're grinding. So if a quest sends you somewhere to grind and to explore, make sure you stay there for as long as possible. You know, creature hunt as much as you possibly can because every creature has a chance to drop a trophy. Every creature type has a chance to drop a trophy. Trophies are extremely valuable right now. Some go for high as 10 to 20 million. So if you get one of these trophies really early on, you can get a full set of fantastic gear. While you're questing, make sure that you're actually focusing on grinding more mobs while you're there. Stay a little bit longer after you've completed the quest and then you'll come out the other side with a little bit more silver. <laughs> which brings me to number nine, which is shinies. Almost every point of interest in the game, uh, you know, Raven's Grove, Hook Mask Camp, Morning Light, Morning Light Mounds has a shiny. It's like a shimmering, the same way quest objectives shimmer and you interact with them, there will be chests, or other assets in the game that have a little sparkle to them and when you interact with them they'll drop Ravencrest emblems 
as well as straight silver and an assortment of other items. Um, Ravencrest albums are used to upgrade your houses. Um, so these are super, super important. And when you upgrade your houses, you get some pretty good buffs. Um, so I implore you to, when you're questing and you're creature hunting, make sure you're actually out there looking for the shiny. Make sure you explore every inch of every POI as you're leveling up. They're also going to give you a bunch of reputation too. So as you progress through the game, as you're questing, as you're staying in places, farming creatures a little bit longer, make sure you're hunting those shinies as well. Which brings me to number 10 is trophies. I'm going to look up uh, trophies here. Let's see if let's see if one is actually let's see if we got any listed ones. Yep. Okay. So we have an arachnid trophy. So all spiders. You you start fighting. I think spiders are one of the first mobs that you actually start fighting. Um, you'll notice that this gives you a permanent bonus to precision plus four percent. That's fantastic. When you get the trophy, you right click it and use it for that four percent precision boost, or you sell it to somebody for nine million silver. This is why, and these can drop from all level of mobs. So this is why I encourage you to stay in grind spots longer when you're questing. And you know, maybe you get a trophy or two. If you get 9 million silver from a trophy early on, you can get that big wagon. You can get that good MOA. You can get that big boat. Or you can get, you know, a full, with 9 million silver, you can get a full set of tier 5 tier five gear probably won't have weapon power on it so i don't suggest to do that but you can easily get a full set of tier four or tier three gear with weapon power on it but i suggest you get the tier three gear start off with tier three gear with weapon power on it because it'll be cheaper to infuse and to upgrade so those are the 10 things that i wish i knew when i started raven dawn i hope that um these 10 things help you on your journey if you are a player that's a higher level like me and you have things that you wish you knew pop them down in the comments to let other players know obviously I can't include everything in the in one video you know when people are down reading the comments maybe I'll add it to the description so that's everything I wish I knew uh, enjoy your time in Raven Dawn make sure you like and subscribe we also stream live on Twitch Monday through Friday, nine to five. If you want to, if you have any questions about Raven Dawn, feel free to stop by, and we'll catch you on the next video. Peace.